thank you to our Patreon members for supporting the channel. After barely surviving the famine, the Iron Teeth decided to make some changes. They had finally harvested enough kohlrabis to feed everyone, thanks to the added farm on the river. But the beavers wanted to make sure they would never go hungry again. They also had a plan to take their colony to the next level and get ahead of the folktales. With metal. The folktales didn't appear to be pursuing metal, and the Iron Teeth wanted to beat them to it. With a bit of building up the mountain, the Iron Teeth would have access to the huge source of metal right next to their colony. Metal would open up all kinds of new advancements. This could be how the Iron Teeth get their advantage. The Iron Teeth have been trailing behind the folktales this entire feud, but this could change all of that. The folktales were doing wonderfully, um, except for the occasional flooding. The reservoir and floodgates were working exactly as intended. They were just a bit difficult to control sometimes. But the river would always sort itself out with no real harm done. As magnificent as the floodgate dam was, Venjo drafted an addition to the design that might help with the flooding. The beavers had made other additions as well. A chestnut tree farm for nuts, and a maple tree farm for syrup. And of course, the social and spiritual retreat in the hills above their settlement was filling everyone with happiness. The beavers were also making quite a winding network in their downtown area. Their colony was definitely larger and more developed than the Iron Teeth, and you would think their new spiritual emphasis would make them desire peace with their timber-born cousins downriver. But no. After the attack on their dams, the folktales were more eager than ever to put the Iron Teeth in their place. The Iron Teeth were pretty eager as well, eager to get up the mountain and begin harvesting scrap metal. Two beavers volunteered for the job, one named Equinus and another named Von John. Yes, not Vinjin, Von John and they began disassembling this dilapidated old human building and stripping away the metal beams for their own use. Back down by the river, the last of the kohlrabis were being harvested, and the beavers were converting the farm into a cornfield. Corn was going to be an important part of making sure the beavers never went hungry again. The extra kohlrabis had saved the family from extinction, but the Iron Teeth had bigger plans in mind. You could feel the excitement in the settlement as the beavers went to work. The scrap metal they were gathering would have so many uses, and it was going to take a long time to harvest it all. The beavers had a plan to future-proof their food supply, and the first baby beavers since the famine came popping out of the breeding pods, filling the family with hope. Maybe this was their moment to get ahead of the folktales, and as more and more scrap metal was hauled away into storage, Ridge Mayar plotted a smelter which would turn the scrap metal into usable beams. It seemed the Iron Teeth had returned with a vengeance after the last dry season, but little did they know, vengeance is what was coming for them. The chestnut trees were chestnutting, which meant the gatherers were hard at work, uh, gathering, so the grill could get to grilling. Wow, that grill is really getting buried in the downtown expansion, isn't it? And the ramp slash retaining wall was going up, and the downtown network was coming together. From the outside looking in, you wouldn't think these beavers had any reason to be bothered by the Iron Teeth downriver. But oh, they were. And they had a plan for revenge that would make the Iron Teeth pay for destroying their dams. The folktales had been saved by their reservoir, but they were gonna make sure the Iron Teeth weren't so lucky. But first, the beavers continued with their building projects. At the moment, things were moving pretty slow because of a shortage of logs. They had built a new tree farm across the river, but it just wasn't ready yet. So the beavers were cutting down trees wherever they could, but it was barely enough to keep the builders working, let alone build up a stockpile. And while slow progress is still progress, it wasn't good enough for Venjo. He called for a massive overhaul of part of downtown, which honestly left the beavers feeling a little uneasy. But I guess Venjo had never let them down before, right? A few of the village elders shared their concerns with Venjo, but mostly the beavers agreed to continue their work. And soon the ramp was finished, which presented them with opportunities to chop down new trees above the reservoir, which could be a big help to the family. This was also the first time these beavers had been up close to one of the ancient metal ruins. Wow, they thought. Those humans knew how to build some crazy structures, but that was about the extent of their thoughts on it, as none of them saw the value of the metal, and Venjo had his mind on other things, not least of which was their planned counter-raid on the Iron Teeth. The Iron Teeth were certainly not expecting a raid. They had been expanding their power input, which they would need to run the smelter once it was finished. They had even begun plans to expand across the river. Perhaps they were just too happy with their recent progress, but the Iron Teeth weren't thinking at all about the folktales and what they might be up to. And that would prove to be a big mistake. That night, the Folktales raided the Iron Teeth settlement and took their revenge. The Iron Teeth had broken the Folktales dam, the Folktales responded in kind. But this time, the damage wouldn't be so easily fixed. This time, the dam was truly broken. 
both levels. The excess water washed downstream as the river returned to its normal level. Unfortunately, that meant farmland that had been greenified by the raised water was now dried out and dying once again. Plans were immediately made to rebuild the dam, but could it be completed before too much was lost? Unfortunately, some of the new crops were especially fragile and died almost immediately, but rebuilding the dam was going to take time. The folktales hit the iron teeth in a big way and really put a damper on their recent excitement. Of course, the success of their raid gave the folktales a spring in their step as they went back to work, though a spring in their step wouldn't make trees grow faster, and these beavers were trying to get logs wherever they could. Thankfully though, just then the oak trees started popping up, and that would help them finish some projects, like relocating their lumber piles, and finishing the downtown changes, and building the biggest house the beavers had made yet. The tiered housing design had really turned out pretty neat, though they were running out of room to keep adding on, and the maple trees had begun syrup thing? Which meant it was time to build a tapper's hut. The tapper would harvest the syrup and the baker would use it to make maple pastries. A surefire favorite for the family. A successful raid and a new tasty treat on the way? What else could these beavers even need? Oh please, like Venjo would let them slow down. So as the first maple syrup was coming in and being delivered to the bakery, and as the smell of maple pastries began filling the settlement, Venjo instructed the beavers to build a catwalk across the river and a second staircase up the other side of the floodgates dam. And oh no, the very thought of construction on the river caused flooding. The new log pile was instead a sog pile. Seriously though, was there some kind of river spirit or something that the beavers didn't know about? Like for real, this was kind of weird and random. Maybe the beavers needed to build another temple to appease the water spirit or something. The Iron Teeth would have welcomed some flooding right about now. It was slow going rebuilding the dam, and until it was finished, a good chunk of their farmland would remain unusable. So Rijimeyar called for a builder's hut so more beavers could help in the work. Maybe that would get them back on track faster. The irony was they had to pause work on the dam to construct the builder's hut, but then the builder workforce was double and the dam would be done in no time. Dead crops were able to be replanted as the water level returned to its previous height. Also, the smelter had been finished and began chugging away, melting scrap metal into metal beams. All things considered, the Iron Teeth had rebounded really well from a pretty serious counter move by the folktales. Now just to figure out how to get back at those punks. But revenge would have to wait. These beavers had bigger fish to fry. Well, not fish, and not frying. But now that the dam was fully repaired and the smelter was up and running, the beavers could finally build what they had been working toward, a food processing factory. Once it was built, this factory would put an end to all their food problems and secure the family's future survival. The Folktales had enough building projects going on already. Venjo was going to town on the downtown remodel, emptying entire warehouses to rearrange the building layout, then tearing them down and making the beavers clean up the remains of their own hard work. Venjo's plans may have been good, but his aggressive direction was wearing on the family's morale. So the next day, Venjo had an idea, and he secretly began working on a special project. Something that the family would like. Something that would make up for the sense of chaos he had caused. Something that would win him back some goodwill. Something that would honor their past. And secret plans are all well and good, but there was still real work to be done. The beavers were nearly finished with the relocated and expanded grill slash bakery corner, and having crossed the river, they were beginning work on the second staircase. And at the end of the day, the beavers could always enjoy some time chanting together in the temple, praying for good health and good weather and good harvests. Speaking of harvests, now that the Builder Brigade had finished the stairs, the colony had access to another supply of logs, which would help with the ongoing construction and Benjo's surprise. Progress for the folktales. It would be a shame if someone came and interrupted that progress. Speaking of interruptions, the Iron Teeth Beavers kept getting injured while working their industry jobs, so they had to build even more medical beds where they could recover. But otherwise, things were going well, especially with the smelter up and running. It was truly remarkable that this small colony had already advanced to metal, as their scavengers gathered it and haulers carried it down the mountain to be turned into metal beams. Soon, the plan for the corn would be realized, and just in time because the field was beginning to sprout. Also just in time because the next drought was already on its way. The beavers would get one good harvest in before the dry season began. And as the last refined metal beam came hot out of the smelter, the beavers watched with awe and wonder and bated breath as the food processing factory was finished. This behemoth of an industrial building would take their raw food and turn it into well, you actually don't want to think too hard about it. You might lose your appetite. But as the first batch of corn was brought in from the farm, the factory churned to life. Literally churned. It was churning the corn in a heated concoction. But doing so multiplied the raw corn into five corn rations. 
The Iron Teeth had basically built a giant popcorn maker, but it was going to feed all their beavers and then some. The days of famine and starvation were behind them, thanks to industrial advancement. With their recent successes, the Iron Teeth started thinking it was time to show those folktales upstream what they were capable of, and finally put them in their place. They didn't have metal or popcorn makers, but the folktales were still doing just fine. They had cleared the plateau of logs, but that was okay because their oak trees had been growing, and they used those logs to build platforms so they could finish Venjo's secret plan. Venjo had only shared the design with a few builders, but he had hyped it up quite a bit, so everyone was excited to see the finished product. It was more decorative than practical, and the builders were really having to dig into their artistic side to finish the job. The next day, the dry season began. And what perfect timing for Venjo to unveil his surprise. The colony had come a long way under Venjo's leadership. Papa Vinjin probably couldn't have even imagined the floodgate dam they'd built, but Venjo didn't want his family to lose sight of those early days, which is why Venjo had secretly been building, and was now finally revealing, a statue of his uncle Vinjin. A giant wooden carving of their dear patriarch, positioned right overhead in the midst of their housing development to remind the family of their past and the great leader who started it all. The beavers were thrilled with the statue. And Venjo earned some extra goodwill with the family too. Good going, Venjo. You're making your family proud. Too bad the Iron Teeth are coming to rain on your parade. That night, the Iron Teeth sent a huge raiding party. And after the folktales had gone to sleep, the Iron Teeth did the unthinkable. The folktales awoke as normal and came barreling out of their homes, only to find all the roads were gone. Somehow, the Iron Teeth had torn up the roads themselves. The paths along the river were gone. The paths up the mountain were gone. Thankfully, the downtown platform network was untouched. But basically everywhere else, the roads were just gone. This alarmed the beavers on multiple levels, because how could you just rip up paths off the ground? What kind of technology could do that? And how did the Iron Teeth have it? Thankfully, paths are a magical thing that can be immediately placed free of charge, so it wasn't long before the settlement started getting back to normal. In fact, it almost felt like this raid wasn't even about hurting the folktales. It almost felt like some kind of brag by the Iron Teeth. Like they just wanted the folktales to know that they had something the folktales didn't. And the technology that could allow them to totally remove paths with ease was not something to be taken lightly. How did they do that though? Suddenly, the folktales weren't feeling quite so confident in their feud. Clearly, the Iron Teeth knew something they didn't know. And that made the folktales feel exposed. I mean, what material was even strong enough to rip up a road? Hmm, that was a puzzle to be sure. This was going to take some real thought. Now that is some top tier psychological warfare, the Iron Teeth thought. How do you make the bigger and stronger enemy afraid of you? You do the impossible, like ripping up their roads. To say the Iron Teeth were proud of themselves would be a massive understatement. For the first time, the beavers felt like they had the upper hand in this feud. Now they just had to capitalize on it. Don't ask how they were going to do that though. Right now, they were taking advantage of the dry season to build more dams. But it would probably involve metal, right? Although, with their industry shut down, the smelter wasn't operating, which meant the scrap metal storage soon filled up, which meant the scavengers couldn't keep working anyway. But that is what we call a minor inconvenience. Hey everyone, Lieutenant Dan here. Thanks for joining me for this chapter of Beaver Tales. I hope you enjoyed it, and I would love to hear from you down in the comments if you did. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to the Patreon members for supporting the channel. You guys have a fantastic day.